G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we're going to be taking a look at the upcoming Brownlow medal, which I recently found out is Sunday night, and that's good for me to find out because I'm going to be live streaming it here on the True Footy YouTube channel, so make sure you join us for all of that. But in today's video, I thought I'd have a little crack at uh, making a bit of a top five prediction. I'm you know, not really great at predicting the Brownlow. It's quite hard to predict, but I've put a little bit of research into it, and I've come up with my predicted top five. Now, early stages, uh, you know, before the count, it does appear that this might be a particularly high or strong polling year for the Brownlow medal. It seems like even if you get about 25 votes, which in some years is good enough to win the medal overall, you might finish fifth this year. So it seems like the top talent is really going to be taking home a lot of the votes this season. I could be completely wrong on that. It's just a bit of a gut feeling based on a little bit of the projections that I've seen. It seems like the guys right at the top are going to have some pretty hefty vote tallies by the end of Sunday night. Before we get into the top five guys, I just want to thank everyone who's jumped on board the channel recently. I set an audacious goal of hitting 15,000 subscribers by grand final day, uh, and you guys have got me super close. As I record this, I'm about 45 short, but with the way it's been going in the last hour or so, uh, there's a chance by the time this comes out, we might have hit 15K. So thank you guys so much. Still tells me about 50% of you that watch my videos uh, haven't actually subscribed. So if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it. It's been a massive year of true footy. Uh, and we're still nowhere near the end, to be honest. We're going to be continuing all through the trade period and the offseason, as I keep saying. But for now, let's talk specifically about the Brownlow medal. Now, the first player in my predicted top five, I'm going to start with uh, fifth spot and then move all the way up to my predicted winner. I'm going to go with Essendon's Darcy Parrish, who surprisingly is the seventh favorite on Sportsbet, paying a whopping $31 to win the medal. Speaking as a neutral, it's been kind of a joy to watch uh, Darcy Parrish blossom in the way that he has this year. He was a, you know, I think he was a top three pick a few years ago, and it's nice to see what a player can achieve when he's played in his rightful position. There's been a lot of talk about Darcy Parrish, both on the True Footy YouTube channel and just in the broader AFL media this year, but I find him to be quite a likable player, and I hope and expect he will get rewarded with votes on Sunday night. Pretty much every year of the last five years or so that Parrish has been playing AFL, he's averaged around the 20 mark, but he's massively jumped up to around 30 possessions a game this year. He's been absolutely outstanding. He's tackling more than ever, and he's actually doubled his clearances. From memory, his clearance is about seven and a half a game, and he leads the league in center clearances this season. So he's been an absolute prodigious midfield gun. What works for Parrish is that even though, you know, he played at Essendon, who won something like 11 or 12 games this year, I think, he did likely, in my opinion, pick up quite a few votes in losses this year. He's taken home three medals, including the Anzac medal, the Wills medal against Geelong, and the Dreamtime medal, which I think is the Yukon award. I'm so sorry if I've said that wrong. So he's taken on those three medals, and in two of those games, Essendon actually lost. So he's picked up potentially six votes there in two losses. What counts against him, I guess, is that he's not really a big Brownlow vote getter until this year, and obviously he hasn't played as well as he has this season. But it was 2019, the last time he picked up his two votes, and that was the only two votes he's ever polled. So you could argue maybe there's a, there's a little bit of a delayed reaction where umpires start to recognize him a little bit more now that people know who he is. But on AFL.com, he's expected to finish fourth with 26 votes, and like like I said before, 26 votes probably wins you the Brownlow most years. He's projected to collect 13 out of a possible 15 votes between rounds 8 and 12, which was just enormous. His big competition in his own side will be Zach Merritt, who is also projected to win 23 votes, but I think Parrish is a good chance to finish top five regardless. In fourth spot, I'm going to go with Port Adelaide's Ollie Wines, and Wines is kind of a funny outlier here because he's the overall betting favorite on sports bet, paying $3.25. But if you look at afl.com.au and their projected uh, predictions, I guess, and I do sort of want to also say that I understand that afl.com.au's projections are almost never accurate, so it's it's worth stating that. But interestingly, they still had him only getting 19 votes and finishing 12th overall, which I think is a little bit off. They've given him just three best on ground performances this year, which might be a little bit light, but they have him getting less votes than his teammate Travis Boak, who they have getting 24 votes. But he's had an absolutely amazing breakout season. He's been top three in disposals this year, averaging 32.4 disposals and four clearances per game. On two occasions, he collected 43 disposals in a game, and I think he had another game where he had 38 as well. So when he goes big, he really goes big. He's having a career best season. It's been nice to see, frankly, for a player who's always had a lot of potential and is just starting to fulfill that at the highest level. I think AFL.com value is underrating him here, and I have him in fourth spot overall.
In third spot, I have Jack Steele of the St. Kilda Footy Club. He is the fourth favorite on Sportsbet at $6.50, and he's projected to come third on AFL.com.au with 29 votes. 29 votes is enormous. Steele's a funny one where he started the year very slowly. He was projected to only collect four votes in the first 10 rounds, but then he absolutely explodes, and according to AFL.com.au, is likely to collect 18 of the next 21 possible votes, which is just mind-blowing. In addition to his 29 possessions a game and six clearances, he actually led the league in tackles this year, sort of reinforcing the idea that he is probably the best defensive midfielder in the game, as well as a contested ball beast. We know he's a known vote getter. He collected 17 votes from 17 games last year and obviously a shortened season that got him equal second from memory. So like I said, the umpires know him and that might be a little factor in him getting a few more votes. He was an All-Australian mid and for mine, he's the clear best midfielder at St. Kilda and I think that helps his case. He doesn't have as much competition for votes in that side. In second spot overall, the player that I probably think is actually the best player in the comp or at least the player that I would steal if I could steal any player in the comp. I'm going to go with Marcus Bontempelli, who is the third favorite on Sportsbet, paying just $4. The AFL website has him finishing second overall with a huge 32 votes, but he's the number one in inside 50s this season and fourth overall in score involvements, which I think is a pretty telling stat. He's projected to collect 12 votes in five games across rounds 15 and 19, but then he goes really, really quiet in the last four rounds, which I think might cost him top spot. The AFL website also projects him to have a monstrous nine three-vote games, which is 27 votes just in itself, which again, alone could win you most Brownlow medals. For him, obviously, there's a bit of talk about competition with Jack McRae, who's also had a really, really good year. Last year, McRae outpolled him 15 votes to 10, and they both had 22 votes the year before that. This year, according to the AFL website, McRae's only expected to get about 14 votes, which surprised me despite the fact he's averaging 34 possessions a game and having one of his best career seasons. Using that logic, I think Bont's improved more than McRae this year. McRae's sort of playing a little bit more to the standard we've come to expect from McRae, whereas Bont, I think, really elevated himself to being, you know, number one or number two mid in the comp overall. So by that logic, I think Bont is likely to still get votes despite McRae this year. And lastly, in first spot, and taking home his first Charlie, I've got Clayton Oliver of the Melbourne Footy Club, who is the second favorite on sports bet, paying $3.75. AFL.com agrees with me. They have him winning the votes with 34 overall, and he's predicted to have 13 out of 15 votes between round 8 and 12. Clayton Oliver's year kind of speaks for itself. He leads the league in contested possessions, stoppage clearances, and he's second in clearances overall, and he's projected to have six best on ground games, which is 18 votes just there and then. Again, I'm probably putting too much stock into the AFL.com predictor, but to be honest, I can't be bothered going through all the games, so I'm kind of using it as a bit of a guide, but it has Bont leading Oliver by six votes votes with four rounds to go. But then, of course, Bont, you know, really drops off and Oliver is expected to have eight votes in that period. So regardless of how accurate that is, I think Bont's slow end of the season will ultimately cost him the Brownlow medal. The other competition to bear in mind for Clayton Oliver is he got a player called Christian Petrarca in that side who is expected to finish top five with 25 votes. And the fact that the Demons won 17 games this year, I think that means there's a good chance both of them are going to poll well anyway. So I still have Clayton Oliver winning the medal. So that's my top five guys. Let me know in the comments what you think I got right or what I got wrong. If I had to nominate a couple of dark horses for the top five, maybe not to win, but for the top five, Luke Parker, I think has had a bit of an understated year. I think they have him like 19th or something like that. I think he'll go a little bit closer to the top five than that. And Tom Mitchell as well, I think he's expected to go about 13th according to the AFL website. But again, probably getting slept on a little bit in terms of how consistent he's been this year. And I think he had the most disposals this year as well. But anyway, guys, that is my top five predictions for the Brownlow medal. I'm planning to do a part two of this video looking at every club's most likely vote getter as well. So stay tuned for that. And of course, like I said, make sure you're there with us on YouTube on Sunday night to live stream the Brownlow medal. It's a lot of fun. We're going to have a few drinks, get a bit loose. It's going to be fantastic. Like I said, guys, really appreciate all your support lately. Let me know in the comments who you think is going to win the medal and I'll see you guys somewhere very soon, somewhere on YouTube. Cheers.